and welcome to the Everett Silver Show. We have exciting guests as we do every week. And so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm always bringing it to you. So thanks so much for staying in tune with us. Stay connected. You're watching the Everett Silver Show. Everett. Lisa Ray, thank you so much. Look, first of all, I got to tell you, what an honor to have you on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. The pleasure's all mine, and I ain't even did it yet, see? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I've been following your career a long time. Well, folks, my special guest is with us. What a mother will do to protect her child. And, uh, Velvet Child presents For the Love of Money. And uh, I have the wonderful privilege of talking to Lisa Ray McCoy, and I tell you, she has a history of stuff that she's been doing. But Lisa, talk about, Lisa Ray, talk about this project, though, of love. Uh, for the love of money and what a mother's uh, won't do to protect a child. You know, it's not a different story that we haven't heard before. It's a life story. It's about the things and the pressures that you go through trying to figure out life. Well, this single mother here is played by Carrie Hilson is uh, just that, you know, she's trying to find her way through life and she's trying to protect her daughter that's gotten herself into a little bit of a predicament. She's trying to do it and do it alone. And she finds herself in the midst of, you know, some bad company and doing some bad things and going down the bad uh, uh, path. And because I'm playing the mom and I still play characters that's strong, you know, I try to drop a little wisdom on her and say, honey, look here, I've been there, done that. You don't want to do it that way. You know what I mean? So I'm the OG. And I like the role because it's a different role for me because I, I, I'm actually wearing a gray wig. I'm, I, um, the mom, she's sick. I'm working through heart failure, um, heart condition. And it's kind of a, a, a sad kind of um, um, scene where you can almost tell that I'm having this conversation with Carrie Hilson, my daughter, that I'm saying, change, honey, before it's too late and before I leave here and you won't be able to have this conversation with me. That right there was strong and powerful for me because as I am a grandmother now, I could only imagine that monologue that I gave it actually took me under for a minute that I had to shake it off and get myself together because it it touched me. You know what I mean? It was real. It's like when we pass an advice on to our, our, our best friend or our kid, you know what I mean? It's like, you want them to do right. Exactly right. And then Lisa Ray, you, uh, I mean, I, I've seen, like I said, I followed your career. Right? What is it like though? I mean, I see, uh, cast, I mean, some cast members we know, you mentioned Carrie Hilson, but what is it like the work, Cat Williams, you know, he's hilarious. You've been a part of some, uh, these type of films where they have some humor with it. What is it like working with some of the ones that you have on the show? Let me tell you, Cat Williams and DC Young Fly was <laughs> in the film. And you think that just because they call action that, you know, it's like, and then go. Uh-uh. It did right. not stop <laughs> at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> off screen, off stage and everything. But that's good because in between takes, you need, you know, that kind of camaraderie to be able to keep you wrangled up and keep you up. You know what I mean? Because we filmed this in the midst of the pandemic. So it was right. very quiet, very walking softly and you know, making sure that you, you know, the mask is on and then on and you make, it was a lot of, of stuff that we had to go through. So they kept the set, um, kind of alive for us, if you will, you know what I mean? And then we had so many musical artists that was there as well. Life Jennings makes a, an appearance, Keith Sweat, uh, Lotto is in it. So, you know, this is a powerhouse film and, and it's a drama filled story based experience based, um, storytelling here and um even jason mitchell you know from the shy and he did um he played easy e um in the movie um i forgot the name of the film um uh jason played in but he played easy e and when i tell you when you become a fan of somebody uh work and you get a chance to work with them yourself you get a chance to leave set and say you know what i got new friends i got more extended family now you know and that's the reason why we do what we do and then, Lisa, Ray, I got to ask you one thing, because to your credits, I know, I, I remember you, you know, from the Players Club on all, I mean, to, to your own series, you know, uh, but I'm just saying that there are things that you've done. Uh, do you see yourself directing more so now? Because I know you've done that in the past. I know you've done some things with BT, the family business, you know, on The Real McCoy. Do you see yourself doing that later on? Because I see women are starting to like, like hit the circuit in a big way. I thought about the Regina King and I, I look at some of the, you dog that down the road. 
I absolutely do because, um, you know, the prepping for me is getting to be a little overrated now. You know what I mean? Like the hair and right, the makeup right. and the lashes and everything. When I did right. do my directorial debut with Skinned, I mm -hmm. love the fact that I was able to put on a hat, some lip gloss, and almost a robe and go to set and go, and action, y'all do this, shit, you know? Right, right. Y'all remember everything, you know? Um, so I, I really like to give opportunity to new and upcoming artists. You know, I've been there, done that now. I want more time to myself and my family. I don't, right. you know, the, the running around so much is a lot. So I want to be able to do my part in society. I want to be able to give back as well. So I want to be able to employ some folks. So you look out for me. I may be doing a little bit more directing. Well, there you go. And look, I want to tell everybody, folks, For the Love of Money are in, is in theaters nationwide Wednesday on November the 24th. What a wonderful privilege they have. The one and only Lisa Ray McCoy. Guys, thank you. so, Lisa Ray, thank you for doing the show and a privilege just to have you. Any last minute things you want to say? You know, I just want to every, encourage everybody while we're still in the midst of this light pandemic, you know, we are essential workers as well. And we're working hard to be able to bring entertainment to the screen, wherever you see it, whether it's the big screen, the small screen or streaming, we are doing our part. So I want everybody else to do their part. And let's uplift each other. And let's love each other, please. Let's support each other. There you go. So I couldn't have said it any better. Lisa Ray McCoy, go out and see For the Love of Money in theaters, November 24th, guys. Thank you so much, Lisa Ray McCoy. Mwah, love you. Love well, you. guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning in to the Everett Silver Show. Stay tuned. Don't turn that dial because we got more exciting guests right here on the Everett Silver Show. Be back in a moment. Hi, Everett. Hey. So, uh, Sophia, Javon, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you. Yep. Well, folks, my guest is with us. Uh, I have uh, two wonderful, talented cast members, uh, Sophia Brown and also Javon McFerrin. Uh, BT's 20s, I tell you, I have been glued to the set uh, of this critical claim. I'm telling you uh, what uh, BT is doing. And, guys, I want to welcome to the show. And I, I start with you, uh, Sophia. Um, just talk about uh, your role because uh, I think the show is kind of, um, you know, opening our eyes to a whole lot of things when you think in terms of relationships. And I know you're playing Ida, this intelligent, sophisticated. Talk about your role about 20s. Yeah, um, Ida B., uh, what's interesting to me is uh, what this show is talking about as it uh, as it pertains to two people in different stages of life, um, navigating the same industry and how they're going about it in a completely different way. Um, there's such a generation gap, I think, between Ida B and Hattie. How I look at things as Ida B is very, very different. And you can see that I've hidden a lot about myself in order to reach a certain status, a certain position in Hollywood. And Hattie is her authentic, messy self, and she's doing it her way. And it's kind of a new way. It's a new way of, of looking at things. And that's why in our relationship, we do butt heads. Um, you know, I try to get her to kind of do it the way I did it. And she's like, that's not who I am. And that carries over into our personal life as well. Um, and so even though I'm extremely in control and have a, a very um, established set of standards and a set of rules that I live by. She, as you know, my partner now, is making me kind of rethink all of the things that I thought I knew, even in my 40s. I'm learning from someone in their 20s. I, I know I was watching uh, the other night and I saw an, uh, Hattie, who's played by uh, JoJo, uh, I think T. Gibbs, and she, she, you know, it, it's. I mean, I was so, so locked in because she, she does kind of reflect. Like, are you sure? Because we're from two different worlds, even than what you just said. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the um, I've spent as Ida B. I've spent a lot of time wearing masks, you know, and right. um, she's right. trying to get me to take those masks off for her. And part of me is like, little girl, you can say that because you ain't got nothing to lose. You know, I've worked so hard for all this and you trying to get me to just right. 
throw it away. You know, that's easy for you in your 20s. You don't got much, you know? <laughs> um, so we're, yeah, we're, trying to, we're trying to work that out. Yeah, and uh, Javon, uh, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I remember the just the session, man. And uh, you, you, you're playing Chuck, and, and and you guys are, you know, you you you're contemplating marriage. And talk about your role because I know there's some things and some secrets that need to come out. There are some secrets. There's some secrets that need to come out, and you'll find out what they are when you tune into the show. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like, uh, you know, Marie and Chuck represent what a relationship can be. We have a great conversation about the checking boxes in a relationship. You have the, the perfect you know, relationship, you have the perfect house, you have the perfect job. But sometimes when you have all those things and but you haven't done the work for yourself of who you really are, none of that really matters. And as long as when you come into a relationship, if you're uh, your authentic self and you communicate really well, then it's probably going to work out. But if you don't do that, if you hide, if you do, you know, if you wear a mask, even with your own partner and you don't tell them 100 percent about who you are, it's just not going to work. And that's what I've really loved about this season with Chuck and Marie is that they are deciding what they want their relationship to be, regardless of what people on the outside might think. So I've really enjoyed the journey and the storytelling. And, you know, I have one of the best scene partners ever. So shout out to Christina. Yeah. She's forever my favorite. <laughs> and, and Javon, when you say that, thinking about uh, how, how important, though, you think that this show is, is really opened the eyes to the world where it have, may have been judgmental at some point that we can see other sides. Talk about that part. Well, I was having a conversation with the writer of, of episode three, and he was just telling me about a lot of people that were even hitting him up in family wise, friend wise, and starting mm -hmm. the conversation mm -hmm. of what he really wanted to have. So I think right. that it's just amazing that people are starting the conversation. It has to start somewhere. And right. if if this show is the vehicle that really starts it so that we can talk about it on a, in our own community on a worldwide scale, then that's absolutely amazing. I'm just happy that the conversations are actually happening. And I think that's what 20s is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to make you think. It's supposed to make you have conversations. You can agree with it. You can disagree with it. But these are people's lives. These are, these are real stories that real people are actually going through. And that's why I think people keep on coming back to watch our show. And so, so Fina, are you, I mean, different roles. You, you've been a part of members, uh, you know, NCIS and Good wife. I mean, how is this role though uh, any different than the other ones you played? I I have enjoyed this immensely because it's the really the first time that I've been able to play someone who is just so complex, and you see their humanity in so many different situations. Um, as much as I've loved the work that I've done in the past, a lot of times um, it's been about exposition. You know, it's been about moving, you know, um, a plot along in a way because there was a murder or because there was, you know, some kind of uh, procedural aspect to it, which is, is fun too. But this is the humanity of this has been a real mm -hmm. gift for me. Um, and also just being part of something that is this groundbreaking, uh, like Javon was talking about, has been uh, just an incredible blessing to allow, um, I don't know, just to use storytelling in a way to have, like Javon was talking about, these conversations that haven't been had and to represent someone in her 40s that, you know, came up on these questions probably in her 20s and chose a very different path and chose a very different way. And we're kind of talking about what it would have looked like if if she hadn't, maybe she would be more like Hattie, you know? Um, right. I don't right. know, but it's really interesting right. dialogue to have. Well, Javon, I'm telling you from your background from Broadway to what you've done with Women Productions, man, I mean, you know, all over. Uh, kudos to what you're doing. I mean, uh, and any last minute things you want to say, because I know we all tune in to 20s Wednesdays, 10 p.m. BET and also BET Her. 
No, I just hope that everybody continues to tune in. And if you haven't tuned in yet, start from the beginning and go on this amazing ride that we've all, you know, been able to be a part of. I, You're going to see people that really enjoy what they're doing, but you're also going to see stories that are going to bring you back to your 20s and maybe have conversations with people and open up your eyes to a lot of different situations. It's just, it's a great show. I'm honored to be a part of it. And um, just come tune in, come join us. 20s guys airs uh wednesdays uh 10 p.m bt more guests coming your way don't touch that dial be back in a moment hi everett hi everett terry james what a pleasure to have you both on the show today well thank thank you. you we're happy to be here yeah well, I can always tell you, Hallmark never fails to bring out some of these most intriguing, uh, wonderful uh, movies uh, for television. And I have the wonderful privilege of talking to James Denton and also uh, Terry uh, Hatcher is with us, the former Desperate High Squad stars, uh, kind of counting down Christmas as a re- they reunite uh, for their new Hallmark uh, Christmas or Channel movie, A Kiss Before Christmas. And um, and I start. With, I guess I start with you, James, because um, you, you're playing Ethan. And uh, tell us about your character and your role on this this TV movie. Well, I had a deal to uh, pr- actually produce a Hallmark Christmas movie. I've never been in one, uh, and so we had to find the script first, and then we found that, and then we realized now you got to find the girl because it's always a you know there's a romantic twist to it always. Um, and this character uh, in this movie, my character is sort of frustrated with his professional life. And he complains to a, a Santa Claus, who he thinks is just a department store Santa. About, oh, I've just been too nice a guy. I could have made more money. My family could have more things. And he doesn't realize he's talking to the real Santa. And suddenly he gets to live that life. But, of course, now he he, he has, doesn't have his wife and his kids. And all the things he loved aren't there. So um, I love the script, the idea of it. And then we had to find the right actress. And so I just texted Terry. And I said, I'm going to send you a script. And would you consider doing this? And I thought she'd be too busy. And she wasn't. So we got lucky, and once we had Terry, everybody got excited, and it sort of took off from there. And we did this pretty, really quickly. We just shot it in September, so it's a fast track. Wow, I tell you, that that is amazing, wonderful story. And then, uh, Terry, everybody remembers you. I mean, I remember, um, you know, I'm just from your from your Superman days to all the stuff you've done. You know, uh, again, we mentioned, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the movie that you did um, – you know, the Desperate Housewives, but talk about your character, though, as Joyce on this uh, television movie. Uh, Well, um, James is right that he did ask me to do the movie, and I was so excited to get the opportunity to work with him again. Um, I really felt like the fans of Desperate Housewives would love seeing us have a happier ending (laughs) to our relationship, and so they vicariously (laughs) get to see that here in this movie. Um, I play Joyce, his wife, and uh, as James mentioned, there's these two alternate worlds, one where James is a uh, a guy who maybe thinks he hasn't chosen the right things in life, and in that world, we're married, and we have a few kids, and uh, I'm a history teacher, and our life is sort of struggling, but, you know, good, and then when he makes this jump to the alternative world that he fantasizes would be better. I <laughs> am not his wife. I'm a lawyer who hates me. And I, and I am, <laughs> I'm like his adversary. And in the end, he has to sort of win me over so that I help him get back to his real life. So it was fun for me because I play a I sort of, understand. Oh, that was my, <laughs> that was Siri. And she wasn't not sure she understood. Yeah, she missed the, uh, some of that. So. The movie, maybe I should redo that. <laughs> I apologize for that interruption. Anyway, um, the two choices were really fun because the one is just a powerful single, you know, woman attorney. And the other is a very loving mom who obviously puts herself second or third Mm. and and so it was it was great one was a little more glamorous one was less and it was fun to be able to play that which is that we knew we had to find the right actress because she really plays two roles Mm. and on the same day like in the morning (laughs) she would be the history teacher wife and then after lunch she would have to be the successful attorney uh single woman so yeah we uh we had to have somebody who could do it it was fun 
Well, I got to ask James, you know, you mentioned uh, being executive producer of this. Uh, this time of year, putting out this type of movies, it uh, sounds like it's something that you really was on your heart to do. From it, 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 Did you capture what you wanted to do this moment? Yeah, that's a good question. I re yeah, I was really happy with it. Um, this has been in the works for three or four years. It was part of the deal I had on the Good Witch series to do a Christmas movie. And we just couldn't find yeah. the right script or the right cast. It didn't really fall together. So, so yeah, this one went, because, you know, I also, most of the Hallmark movies feature actors in their 30s, you know, maybe 40s. So I wanted it to be, be age careful. appropriate. <laughs> yeah, well, like Terry. <laughs> most of the movies have people like Terry. Uh, oh, uh, right. they, yeah, but they I had to find one that was for an old man. Um, but no, so it had to be age appropriate. It had to be somebody who was, you know, in the middle of their life, not, you know, one of these, you know, beautiful 30 year olds that they normally are. And so once we found the script, then I really did kind of fall in love with the idea yeah. of it. And the kiss before Christmas idea is basically that he has, has to win her over enough that she would like the, you know, uh, understand who he was and, and like even that Ethan too. So it's, Yes, to answer your question, I really love the project. Mark it's Amato a, came up with it. And it's a really lovely story. And James, I will say, was a really good producer. Not he did, he really took care of the cast and the crew, not just me, everybody so respectful on the set, so making sure that everybody had what they needed, hired a great DP and a great director and great crew. And it was really a lovely experience. You did a good job. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Well, I tell now you, watch Lord, the both of you, you know, what y'all bring to the table is always iconic. I mean, and then, Lord, lastly, you, 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 this character, I know it sounds like you guys have a good camaraderie, but it is something that when you look back at it, you know, over, you, you mentioned uh, sometimes we get seasoned in your, in your uh, artistry. Is this something that you, you kind of want to look forward to in the, in the days to come? How do you mean, doing more movies like this? Yeah, doing more movies like this or just speaking. What 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 make what makes you get he you say he called you. What makes you say, Okay, I wanna do this? Oh, well, I was just excited to work with James, period. Um, but I really did equally like this particular story. Um, you know, right. I always right. am looking at the material, but it was it was really a, a pleasure to get to work with you. And we're even mm -hmm. talking about how do we figure out how to do a series together. So we there's no shortage of us wanting to keep working together and i think <laughs> maybe there's a sequel in this movie that that's kind yes. of being thrown around i sort of like the idea of offering a christmas movie every year that seems yes. like something good to look forward to yeah there's definitely a sequel in it well i gotta tell you guys everybody's gonna be glued to the set a kiss before christmas for <laughs> premieres sunday november the 21st 8 p.m of course on the hallmark channel what a wonderful privilege to have the executive producer, also one of the stars. A Kiss Before Christmas. I uh, want to thank James Denton and also the iconic Terry Hatch. I mean, you know, everybody loves oh. Terry. And so thank you guys for just thank being you. a part of the show today. And thank you guys for doing the show. Thank you. Thanks, Happy holidays. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Hi, Everett. Hi. Cheyenne and uh, Vela, thank you for doing the show today. What a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Well, folks, I got the stars. Uh, Comedy Central's film are, you know, they're doing some great things. Holiday TV romance, you need to know about love and stuff. But CLN's also Rachel Graff and, uh, and I kind of got this. Uh, I tell you, this is a wonderful Christmas story that we got to talk about. And I got the stars here. So uh, I guess uh, I'll start with you, man. Let's talk about this uh, wonderful uh, Christmas show. Yeah, uh, Rachel Dratch and Anna Gasteyer from SNL wrote this really funny, really sweet script uh, that really kind of lovingly sends up, <laughs> lovingly makes fun of of these these holiday films on television that play every single day on so many channels. Uh, and in doing so, they've managed to create this great uh, original piece with great characters, super funny. I play Frank Clusterfunk, uh, a man of simple pleasures. Uh, he, he loves his wood. He loves his tools. He loves his family. And he doesn't want anybody messing with it. Um, so I love that his, his, all he wanted was just uh, a, a very simple, clear goal. And then... Little Miss City Slicker comes in and rocks his world. <laughs> uh -huh. Bella, is he talking about you? <laughs> I think he's talking about me. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I play Holly Jenkins, and she's um, she's a businesswoman in the big city, and she's decided to be a career woman and put her career first, and she doesn't like Christmas. And she gets um, um, put on an assignment to go buy at this inn in this small Christmas town. And that's where she meets Frank and, um, and, and Rachel and Anna, who are playing spinster aunts who own this inn. And, and then holiday antics ensue from there. Well, I tell you, when you talk about this time of year, having these types of movies, any, I tell you, what what better way to kind of just, where we are in the world and all, to have these type of stories, I mean, that were a hard woman. Any last minute things? I know we don't have a lot of time, but uh, Sam, do you think we, we can accomplish that? Because you're, you know, Grammy Award nominated singer, actor, uh, you know, things. How is that into play and what you're doing with this roles? Um, I mean, I, th I like to think of, all of the things I've done in my career always kind of help whatever I'm doing. Like you never know where a skill is going to help you. Like I grew up in Idaho actually chopping wood and here in this movie, I got to chop wood. So um, all of the, all of the little bits and bobs that you learn in your life, uh, you never know when they're going to come and, and help you out for a part. And just to touch on what you said before we go, I, I think it's, a, that's what this movie does so well. It's a perfect, little escape you know we've all been living through a really rough two years so for 90 minutes you can just go to happy land go to yule town and enjoy your hot chocolate and um hopefully laugh and and feel good about yourself and feel good about life for yeah, now. and know that everything is going to work out everything's going to turn out okay right and Bella, i tell you too, kudos to you because i know you know, the different roles you play, you know, alongside Tan Dancing and all those other Holly Hunter. But thank you guys for what you're doing. And guys, it, it you got to make sure you, it premieres December the 4th, Saturday. Um, this this wonderful Christmas story on Comedy Central. And make sure you tune in, guys. Uh, guys, thank you so much for doing the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, Bye. You're, welcome. you're so welcome. <laughs> i